starts off the video with his distracted driving. Ken, I don't care how you try and sugarcoat this, you are reckless. All it takes is a split second for something to go wrong and you've impacted multiple families all for your damn YouTube channel. Be better, mate. Is it that hard of a concept? Hey guys, how you doing? Today is a special video just for you. We are in Port Sydney, Muskoka, Ontario, Canada at a mom and pop shop that I've heard about for years and I've always wanted to come here. So today is the day. Let's go grab some food, come back here and see if it's any good, which it's gonna be awesome. Let's just do this. See if it is any good, which it is going to be awesome. Once again, Ken, you are saying something is going to be awesome before you even try it. That's an asinine statement to make. Not sure why you simply couldn't say. People claim it is awesome, so let's go find out. See how that implies a query and yours does not? First time here, I heard you guys have amazing food. What is like the most common thing people buy when they Ken just cannot leave things alone and just has to touch and move them. The menu was on full display, but nope, grabby Ken couldn't leave it be as he bugs the poor employee asking all sorts of ridiculous questions to try and make him look so professional. Ken is not very good with interacting with others as he isn't really able to ad-lib or hide his disapproval over things. Come here, why do they come here? Okay, well let's do uh, a poutine. And I think I gotta try your like banquet burger too. Oh yeah? I nailed it. And you guys, what, what's uh, on top here? We got ice cream floats, can pop, no milkshakes. I would love to do an ice cream float. Oh, really? Oh, no. Poor Princess Kendall, passive aggressively trying to express in a positive way their disapproval of the restaurant not having ice cream on hand to make him a float. Womp womp. All right, uh, let's do a Dr. Pepper. Mix it up. Let's go small on the poutine because I think the banquet burger and, and the poutine are gonna kill me. Says the guy who has eaten far more than that on a consistent basis for years. I'm also not sure why he seems to be ordering things a la carte. I'm sure he could have gotten a banquet burger combo with a poutine upcharge and his drink for under $20 before tax. Ken, again, doesn't know how to order. Can't blame a place for giving the customer exactly what they request. I guess lettuce, tomato, do you have onion? Um, ketchup, mayo, mustard. Oh look, Ken's original burger order again. Also, isn't it funny how he claims to love pickles, but won't order it on a burger? He tends to say, well, I love them with hot chicken, to get around that. But meanwhile, he says, I love pickles, in a rather general way all the time. Yes, please. Perfect. I will top that. Let's do... You know that if he was not filming the screen, he would have likely pushed the bottom left button. Ken tries to say he is such a great tipper. How come he didn't give them a best service ever during these tough times? Oh, wow. Thank you very much. Have a good day. People, let's eat. 
So, what we are about to see is a continuity error from Ken. As he walks back to the car with his food, he has no mask on as he was loitering around outside filming B-roll footage. Miraculously though, he has his mask back on as he gets into the car. Ken done gone and goofed up big time. Wearing the mask that he feels makes him look like a... I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I sleep all night and I work all day. I cut down trees, I eat my lunch, I go to the lavatory. On Wednesday I go shopping and have buttered scones for tea. I cut down trees, I skip and jump, I like to press wildflowers. I put on women's clothing and hang around in bars. He cuts down trees, he skips and jumps, he likes to press wildflowers. He puts on women's clothing and hangs around in bars. I cut down trees, I wear a hill, suspend his and a bra. I wish I'd been a girly, just like my dear papa. I he cut down trees, I wear a hill, suspend his and a bra. I wish I'd been a girly, just like my dear papa. Oh, feathers! And I thought you were so budge! We are back in the car. Time to take off the safety mask, throw that down there, get out the trusty steering wheel tray, and start eating, shall we? Okay, let's just put this up here. Let's just take this apart piece by piece. So, I guess he considers take this apart piece by piece is yet another one of his amusing shticks when it is in reality a dull and redundant moment. I thought I'd go with Dr. Pepper. I don't think I've ever drank Dr. Pepper on this show before. I always go for Coke or Pepsi. So today, Dr. Pepper. Let me know in the comments below if you love Dr. Pepper. And if you also know there is a drink combination of certain alcohols like Amaretto and something that makes up a shot shooter that when you drink it, it tastes like Dr. Pepper. Let me know how to make it in the comments below. There's a spider in here. Leave it to Ken to bring up alcohol for really no apparent reason. Or perhaps there is a reason. We don't know why you do it, but you do. We're at the cottage country and I got spiders in my car. Dude, get out. There's a jumping spider. Nice. Cheers, guys. To the small mom and pop shops, may you survive this pandemic. All right. With the help of me and you guys, that's how it's going to happen. Says the putz who rarely goes to mom and pop shops. Or when he does, he complains about the price for the amount of food given and says a fast food giant is a better value. Ken is all about quantity over quality. When mom and pop shops tend to do quality over quantity, or in many instances, they give the customer both. Oh, I'm glad we didn't go big, man. Holy cow, look at the size of this poutine. Smokes. Let's get out our cutlery set today. <laughs> Today we're gonna choose something a little different. I think I have an actual fork in here that I forgot about. Thanks, Pamela. Oh, there is my burger. Nice. And this will be our poutine of greatness. This is, oh my gosh. All right. Holy, let's go in for a close-up. All right, guys, going in for the extreme close-up of this crazy, huge meal. There is our poutine. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like they use cheese curds. Uh-oh. Looks like we might have another curd gate on our hands here, people. Ken never leaves the fact a place does not use real cheese curds alone. Uh, but there is a lot of gravy bubbling around in there. They don't chimp out whatsoever on the gravy. The fries look wonderful. Uh, again, unfortunately, they're not using cheese curds. See? Told you. Watching this 
through for the first time as I do this react, and I know it is going to be harped about numerous times. So it looks like they're using uh, cheddar and mozzarella cheese, which will uh, definitely change the flavor of a poutine. Do you know it is mozzarella, Ken? It could be shredded marble cheese, which usually in Canada is just a white and orange cheddar blend. Then we've got our sweaty Dr. Pepper. And then look at this burger, man. It looks it looks like it's a handmade patty. Let's check this out. Let's flip the top. We've got our mayo, our lettuce. We've got our tomato. We've got um, oh, that's no, that's not a handmade patty. It looks like a pre, like one, uh, like a frozen patty. We got nice chunks of bacon in there, cheese. That looks wonderful. Let's uh, put it all back together and take a bite. See if it's any good. Uh, these are very, very large cut fries. Look at the thickness of that fry right there. Ken is clearly not at all thrilled, and this is likely why we didn't get a cheese. Or perhaps he has officially taken the hint that it is a ridiculous gag that makes him look imbecilic. Who knows? That looks yummy. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what kind of potatoes they're using, but they are scrumptious. Oh, we can do a cheese pull, can't we? <laughs> cheese pull almost. Well, I spoke too damn soon. I knew he would likely not be able to resist the urge, but as with most things on his channel, it was an epic fail. Jeez. Jeez, Paul. Okay, this is going to be too hot. I'm just I'm scared. I'm, I'm stalling. Yeah, too hot. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. All right, let's, let's bump it down to a smaller one so I don't die as quickly. Heat-wise. Mm. Their gravy... Tastes like a beef-based gravy. There's a cheese pull right there. How tall? We can go right to the roof. To the roof? <laughs> so let's spin it. If you need entertainment for your kids' birthday parties, you have your clown, everybody. Just give Ken Domic some molten cheese, and he will either keep himself or maybe even your children entertained for hours doing cheese pulls you know if you're stuck for making a poutine you don't have any cheese curds <clears throat> definitely using cheddar <coughs> excuse me definitely using cheddar and uh, mozzarella works totally totally different flavor well hello little ant on the steering wheel what are you up to, I wonder, little fella? But it works. Can you call it a poutine? Nope. It's definitely not a poutine. You gotta have cheese curds for it to be called a poutine. See how passive aggressive he is? Many have said that you technically can still call it a poutine, even if it is not traditional. I know there will be purists, but most pizza in North America, for example, would not be considered pizza in Italy, so there has to be some give and take. Ken is just crabby about the lack of curds, so he will not overlook this. And if you didn't notice, our little friend, the ant, went down the right side of the tray, and that was the last that I saw of him. But the, this, this whole thing works, it's great tastes good it's very filling it's yummy crazy hot Woo! Mm. it's nice changing up changing up your your beverage once in a while let's just move that there for a second let's see if we can dig into this burger let that cool down a bit See how we can gonna get this thing out of here. Okay, there we go. Now it's out. Let's just quickly take the bottom off. It smells awesome. It smells like a backyard barbecue type burger. I'm gonna have to pull this off somehow. All right. Is it? You know what it is? It's uh, one of those. I think they call them bear claw burgers. 
You can buy them up here in Canada. I'm not sure if they're all over the place, but it's like a bear. It's just in the shape of a bear paw. Uh, I guess they call them bear paw or bear claw patties. Didn't look like a bear paw burger to me. A frozen patty, yes, but it didn't have the distinctive shape. You've eaten these frozen burgers on your channel before though, and absolutely love them, so this shouldn't be any different. But this looks like your typical awesome mom and pop shop burger, just loaded to the top with greasy goodness. I don't think I'm gonna get my mouth around that, people, in one bite. What do you think? Well, here we go. I did it. Hmm. The patties cook nicely. Good choice in buns. Hmm. The bacon is thick. Kind of has that smoky flavor to it. It's definitely adding something to this burger. And all the fresh ingredients. I think the difference between a bacon cheeseburger and a banquet banquet burger is it's supposed to be female bacon. And this is just regular bacon. So I wouldn't call this a banquet burger. Hmm. Let me know once again, guys, in the comments below. I think the difference between a bacon cheeseburger and a banquet burger is the fact instead of using regular strips of bacon, you use back bacon or pea meal bacon. Some places will do that, but technically a banquet burger and a bacon cheeseburger is one and the same. Although some places may distinguish the two based on toppings, where a banquet would realistically have more veggies included. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. That's a lot of cheese. Hmm. Great tasting burger. Pretty expensive. I think the burger was nine something. I don't remember what the cost of that poutine is. She says that feeds too. Definitely as a snack it would feed too. The poutine looked like a meal for two to me. Maybe splitting a burger if you needed a bit more, but not everyone likes to eat like a glutton. Good burger. I'm enjoying it thoroughly. Definitely on the way up to the cottage. North of Bracebridge on Highway 11. Turn off towards Port Sydney and grab yourself some grub. You probably already have if you live up in this area or at least you have a cottage up this area, you visit up this area. But uh, again, the food is phenomenal. People. I'm trying to see how deep it is. Yeah, it's pretty. It's kind of a little deceiving. It's like a big tray this way, but it's shallow this way. Hmm. It is a lot of food for sure. Uh, getting a medium would definitely fill you up. You wouldn't probably have to eat anything for a while after eating this whole thing. Hmm. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to find more of these types of places. If you like this type of a series, this type of a show where we go in. It'd be nice to interview the, the, the owners. See, he is trying so desperately to make a relevant show, but that is not possible as Ken simply does not have the personality 
or likability to warrant face-to-face -face interactions with owners. He also will drop this as he will not be impressed with the view count compared to that that he gets on the fast food videos. This is just how Ken is. He gives the illusion that he is not a one-trick pony. Before I get here, or when I get here, it'd be nice to actually get here, interview the owner, sit down with the owner, eat some grub, find out how long they've been here and just a little bit of history. And that would add like a little bit of a more um, a personalized uh, element to the show. Good luck with that one. The only owner that seems to like you is the guy who owns Garfields. And that is due to you being about the only customer to ever rave about the food they produce. <laughs> Ken has champagne wishes and caviar dreams. When in reality, all he has is club soda and cocoa puffs. One of the things in the past when I'm, when the, when the company or the restaurant knows I'm coming, I always let them know. I said, please don't like give me extra stuff and make it bigger because if you guys come here and don't get the exact same thing I get, then there's a bit of a problem, right? So I always tell them, make it exactly the same way you make it for any other customer. Don't do anything special to it. Don't give me more than you would normally do because you'd be disappointed if you came and I show you all this amazing food and you didn't get that same food. That must be so difficult for Ken, seeing as he likes to be treated like a VIP. Not sure he realizes that it really is a very important person when he's more of a very incompetent putz. Hmm. Just to go through the bill real quick for you guys, the small poutine, this is the small poutine, and it's huge. I'd hate to see the large poutine. It is $10.95. The banquet burger was $9.95. The can of pop was $2.25. Plus I gave them 20% tip after taxes and everything came to $31.04 uh, before the tip. So the tip was $5.17, uh, but they deserve it. You know, these people are working hard. They're trying to survive and uh, made good food, so. Like I said earlier, he ordered things a la carte. I'm sure the employee maybe could have done it in a combo to save him a few bucks, but perhaps she was new and didn't know. Not going to fault her or the business for it. Ken didn't inquire, so that is on him. I'm going to finish the rest of this off, but I want to thank you guys for dropping by. Once again, you're heading north through Muskoka country. You're on Highway 11, get off at the 141 exit, uh, head east, and uh, hit up the heart of Muskoka Fries and indulge in some poutine and some banquet burger and have as much fun as I did. If you love this video and you want to show your support for me doing these videos just for you, hit it with a thumbs up, ding, 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 ding. Well, Ken didn't bitch about the curds quite as much as I expected, but he did mention it four times. You could definitely tell he was not impressed with the food, given it was a generic frozen burger, had no curds, and was overpriced. You could definitely tell he was not thrilled with paying $31.04 for that, with tip included. Honestly, the video was very droll. It didn't offer any sort of entertainment value whatsoever. I know I've said that before, but this one just really takes the cake when compared to the others. I didn't really bother to skip through much as I felt just showing off how boring it was was kind of necessary, I guess. At any rate, if you enjoyed me doing these videos just for you, hit that like button. If you're new here, consider tapping that subscribe button if you feel I've earned it. And perhaps sharing this video or leaving a comment down below, please. It would be immensely appreciated. As always, this has been another Ken Domic Dissemination Expose. 
But until next time, KDDE out. But if you're hungry for more, check out this awesome playlist over here, and we'll see you over there. Bring your hunger.